Hey guys, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I'm Greg, and today I wanted to talk to you about a book that I finished yesterday. It is Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. This is a newly translated collection of short stories from Riverhead. Um, it has a gorgeous cover as well, so take that in. These are butterflies, in case you can't tell. I, I love the cover. I could stare at it all the time. Now, I have already talked about Samantha Schweblin a lot on this channel because I'm a big fan of her book Fever Dream, which was uh, published, I believe, last year. It won the Tournament of Books, which is how I discovered it in the first place. I think it defeated Lincoln in the Bardo, actually. So it was an underdog going in. It, it just it sounded interesting, so I picked it up and I loved it, even though I don't quite understand it. I included it in my list of the weirdest books I've ever read, just because I, a year later I still feel like I'm trying to figure it out. But even though I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand it, I enjoy trying to put all those puzzle pieces together. And that's a very specific thing. So you can imagine that I approached Mouthful of Birds with a big combination of both excitement and trepidation. Because, will lightning strike twice? <laughs> if, if it's in that same style where you don't quite understand what's happening, would it be done just as well? Um, I also think Fever Dream probably benefited from the fact that I didn't go into it with any expectations. And now I have expectations for this one. So... Would Mouthful of Birds live up to all of the expectations that I had after reading Fever Dream? Well, the short answer is yes and no. So on the one hand, Schweblin remains a masterful writer. I really like the way she writes. Her stories are really unsettling, and there's a sort of propulsive sense of unease that compels you to keep reading and work your way through the book, which isn't that long, actually. It's 20 stories... Uh, and it is 228 pages. There is some shock in here, so there are some things that are a little bit gross, but it never feels cheap. It always feels like there is a purpose behind what Samantha Schweblin is doing, even if you aren't exactly sure what that purpose is. And I, I compare that to Eileen by Otessa Moshfeng, which I feel like was a book that was gross just for the sake of being gross. And that really turned me off. And I, do, I don't feel the same thing coming from Samantha Schweblin at all. Now, on the other hand, while Schweblin's writing does compel you to finish, because it's short stories and not a novella, it doesn't feel like it's building toward anything. And that was part of what I really liked about Fever Dream. Most of the stories are very short. And because they're a little un difficult to understand, it makes them e the shortness makes them easy to read, but it makes the experience feel a little bit empty. As a group, that is, if you take the collection as a whole, they pack a punch. But if you look at them individually, they start to lose flavor really quickly. Uh, I, like I said, I finished this yesterday, and I remember stories from the beginning of the book, I remember stories from the ending of the book, but I've lost everything from the middle. I looked back at the names, and I, could, I had to flip to the story itself to remind myself of what was happening. And that's not exactly good. So I think it's clear that Mouthful of Birds is definitely not going to stay with me in the same way that Fever Dream did. And like I said, I, I guess it's just that when the deeper meaning of the stories is pretty elusive, it doesn't feel the same way as it, when it's just one story that's slightly longer. Um, when, it, when it's 20 different stories that are difficult to understand, it's, well, it's another story entirely. And I will say the last story uh, feels like it takes a dip into satire, which feels tonally off from the rest of the book. It's still unsettling, it's still creepy, it's still kind of violent, but it just, as I was reading it, I kept thinking to myself, is this supposed to be funny? Am I, am I supposed to be laughing? Because um, it just was felt like such a departure from everything that came before it. I would not at all be surprised to find out that it had been originally published separate from the rest of these stories. I'm sure a lot of these were published in different areas, but that's the one that felt different from the rest to me. The internet, by the way, was completely unhelpful when I tried to look into the publication history of that last story, but oh well. So here's where I'm at. In the end, I would be willing to recommend Mouthful of Birds, but only under certain circumstances to certain people and with some very specific caveats. Uh, there's a blurb on the back of the book from J.M. Cutsey, a Nobel laureate, he says, The Grimm brothers and Franz Kafka pay a visit to Argentina in Samantha Schweblin's darkly humorous tales of people who have slipped through the cracks or fallen down holes into alternate realities. And I think that's accurate. If that sounds like something you're into, go for it. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to point you to Fever Dream, and I'm going to keep pointing people to Fever Dream instead of this one. Um, but I remain impressed by Samantha Schweblin and her skill as a writer, and I am very curious to see what she does 
next. If you liked Fever Dream or Mouthful of Birds or you're curious about this, I do have some other recommendations for you. First, Vampires in the Leaven Grove. I have an advanced reader's copy of this, so it does not have the wonderful cover that the book usually has. Uh, this is a collection of stories from Karen Russell, who is the author of Swamplandia. There is a story in here that's about uh, someone who's giving a massage to someone with a really elaborate tattoo, which really reminded me, uh, I, I thought about that one a lot as I was reading Mouthful of Birds, because there's a story in here in which massage plays a pivotal role. Um, but the tone of this book, I, I would say, would be very fitting for uh, Samantha Schweblin. Uh, or you could check out 10th of December by George Saunders. He's also very surreal. Um, I think it's <laughs> funny that Fever Dream was up against Lincoln and the Bardo in the finale because they, they are kind of in the same wheelhouse. So I would definitely check that check out this story. Uh, I thought I thought about a lot about this one as well while I was reading Mouthful of Birds. And finally, you could check out Angela Carter's The Bloody Chamber. This is this re-release is from Penguin. It has a really beautiful cover, uh, which was done by a tattoo artist, and you can tell it has that kind of tattoo look to it. These are creepy stories, um, mostly centered around fairy tales and those kind of familiar stories like that. Um, it's definitely in the same wheelhouse, so consider that one as well if you're into the idea of Mouthful of Birds. So that's it for Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. Thank you for taking the time to watch this review. If you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing or watching some more of my videos, or drop me a comment with some other recommendations based on this and Fever Dream. If you've read this and have opinions, let's talk about it. If you have opinions about Fever Dream, I would love to talk about that. So let me know. And until next time, happy reading.